No, this is Buck Fever. Or Frostbite. Oh, there he is. He's right there. <laughs> That's big ass fish. That's a monster, Mike. Good job. And that's why we're obviously outdoorsmen. Ba -ba -ba. And good morning, everybody. I am Mike with Obviously Outdoorsman. Welcome to FLT number 20, or First Light Talk number 20. I hope you guys are having a great morning. And we're already 20 episodes in of Obviously Outdoorsman's First Light Talks. I started this on January 6th. It is now January 26th, and we are 20 episodes in. And today's topic, all right, hunters feel happiness or remorse. All right, antis make the constant argument that hunters are heartless because we are happy when we kill an animal and we normally get called every name in the book. But what people don't understand is that the smiles and the high fives aren't solely on killing, on the killing aspect. And that's what we're talking about today. But first, I want to talk about a mix of news articles that will all be listed in the description below. All the links will be down there. And that topic is on the fact that in the past two years, they were the first in many where hunting license sales were increasing, whereas they've been on a steady decline for quite some time. All right, license sales were up on average 5% from 2019 to 2020 across all four regions of the country. All right, and it's super important that the hunting community keeps these new hunters. And COVID and the pandemic and the lockdowns, they were all a big portion to this increase. That was the big driving reason. And the reason behind this is the free time and the supermarket food scares led many to turn to the outdoors and to nature for food and to just to be outside and connect with nature. And hunting was a big aspect in many people's lives during the pandemic. And num numbers fluctuate in the stats for obvious reasons, but from 2019 to 2021, there were about 31 million total resident hunting license, tags, permits, stamps, sales in 2019. So from 31 million in 2019 to approximately 35 million sold in 2020. And that 4 million people are a huge difference, being that we've been on a steady decline for quite some time. And in 2016, the total dollar amount that was made was $824 million approximately. And in 2021, that skyrocketed, skyrocketed to $918 million. So from $824 to $918 million in revenue out of hunting license sales. So a ton of more people got into the outdoors in that time frame and some states had a massive number growth so this was just the overall number growth and some states there's more hunting opportunities versus other states so so this is why it kind of averaged it out to a lower number but states like uh, Michigan they saw a 67 percent growth in new hunting buyers Nevada saw a 30 percent increase in new hunting buyers Washington state doubled the amount of people that went through the hunter safety program than the year prior. Maine sold a record number of deer permits up by 9% in that time frame. Idaho saw a 28% increase in first time licensed buyers. So essentially the pandemic showed the world that there are a ton of people interested in hunting, but they just don't have the time or don't know how to start the process. And if you guys are just coming across this podcast of Obviously Outdoorsmen and you guys are interested in hunting and you want to know how to start the process, uh, I would be more than happy to help you guys go through that process. It's actually very easy, but I understand it's very hard. If you know nobody that hunts, it's very hard to get into. I was fortunate enough to have my father uh, basically grow me up around hunting and fishing in the outdoors, and it shaped me into the man I am today, and I could not be more appreciative to the fact that he introduced me to this. And if you are a parent, a lot of people introduce kids into like fishing, and if you guys aren't for it yourselves, like the parents out there, just introduce, give everyone the chance to see if they like it, All right? Just like the same way with sports, uh, you don't know if they want to try baseball, football, soccer, bowling, uh, whatever it may be, 
you don't know if they're going to like it unless they try it. And like for me, I always was interested in football, but my mother never put me into football. I was always a baseball guy. So maybe I could have done something in football. But if I was never introduced to fishing or hunting or if I never grown up around it, it'd be extremely difficult to get into it. And especially if you live in a family to where your parents may not be too keen on the aspect of some of their son or daughter hunting or fishing then that that's a big blow because it limits you to your imagination and what what you want to do essentially so if you guys are interested i implore you to actually go through with it and try and learn as much as you possibly could and if you're interested in the hunting aspect i know it's very hard if you have a parent that's completely against hunting but maybe just buy a bow or start target shooting, get really good with archery. And once you get good with archery, maybe bring up the aspect of uh, maybe I want to try hunting and just keep it to an archery standpoint at first, right? Just kind of ease into it and then try and just do it on your own. And there's a lot of hunting different groups and communities on Facebook and forums. There's plenty of people that would be more than happy to be your mentor and teach you about the outdoors but the great thing now in 2022 with the internet being as big as it is anything you want to learn it's just a click away through the internet you you want to search how to do this this or this just search it up you want to learn how to hunt deer or bear or turkey or how to learn something new it's all through one click on the internet whether it be youtube or just the vast information on google all right so if you want to learn every the whole initial process of just getting your license is actually pretty easy you just go to your state's hunter safety course so if you live in like ohio just do ohio hunter safety course or new jersey new jersey hunter safety course and the same thing with every other state and it'll walk you through how to do it normally you have to uh you normally have to study a little bit but from when i did my hunter safety course and i started out you just go on for me new jersey hunter safety course And it basically, it was a bunch of videos that you had to watch teaching you about hunting, teaching you about everything. And at the end of every chapter, there were about like 12, 15 chapters, something like that, going through every aspect of hunting. And at the end of the chapter, there was like a little 10, 15 question quiz, basically that you were retaining the knowledge and uh, you were a serious hunter. And then at the end of that, you did an online test. And then once you complete the online test with a passing score, you have to set up a field day. And the field day basically shows that you uh, retained all that knowledge. You have to do an in-person test. And then you basically just have to show that you could operate a weapon safely. Safely. So if you want to get into hunting and you've never picked up a bow, it's kind of hard. So before you start all this, at least practice with the bow and arrow if that's what you're trying to get into. Practice and become proficient in it and then go and take your hunter safety course. And you basically just have to show that you can operate a weapon safely and you're effective with that weapon. So for New Jersey, you had to put three out of five arrows in uh, a certain size circle at like 15 or 20 yards. And for the gun, you really didn't have to hit anything. You just had to prove that you knew how to operate it safely and effectively. So that's basically it. And if you guys have any questions, please email me. obviously outdoorsman at gmail.com uh, or just whatever social media platform facebook youtube instagram uh, tiktok just send me a message uh, that you're interested in hunting and you want to learn more since i started this podcast i've had a bunch of people actually hit me up and say hey what am i doing wrong what can i do different uh, can you do a video on this aspect of hunting because this is where i struggle or how should i improve in this and i love it if you guys want anything talked about on this podcast of obviously outdoorsmen uh just contact me find a way to contact me and i will be more than happy to get back to you very quickly and if i could help i will definitely help and on a case-to-case basis everything is different but i will help as much as possible but back to the topic of happiness and remorse compared to hunters right there are a number of reasons someone may choose to hunt Whether it may be for food, connecting to the outdoors, the ultimate experience, health reasons, or the rush of emotions after a harvest, there's a bunch of different things. But 
the common misconception with like anti hunters and non hunters is that we just kill things and just do nothing with them. So recently, recently I've actually had this question asked me a lot because I started a new job and a bunch of people are trying to like learn who I am. And uh, there were a couple of vegans at the job and they just asked me that they were like, um, oh, I heard you do a YouTube. What is it? And I'm like, well, you're a vegan. You're probably not going to like it. And she was a vegan that was okay with hunting. And what, no matter your opinion on everything, this should be your just mindset of life, whether you believe or disbelieve in something, uh, don't just discredit the other person's opinion. So if it's like, like I'm a hunter, she doesn't hunt, but she is like, okay, you hunt. I respect that. It's not for me though. Just say it's not for me, but I respect that you do it. Just like how she did, it was perfect. And I wish everyone on this planet would think like that. It's not for me, but you can do it as long as you're happy doing it. And she was like, well, do you eat everything that you kill? And I'm like, yes, we eat just about absolutely everything we could possibly take off an animal. Uh, we take the hide sometimes. Sometimes we can make a coat out of it, a hat out of it, or we hang hang it on the wall for experiences because you can't eat like the fur, the antlers, the nose, the eyes. You can't eat that kind of stuff. So the stuff that you can't eat, then, then we do stuff with, we make stuff with. Um, and... As long as you're eating everything that you harvest, which is how it should be, or if you're giving it to someone that will eat everything. I know many people that hunt, but they don't like venison, so they give it to people and they absolutely love it. So whether it be for yourself or for someone, food is, as long as you're not wasting anything. Waste is just pointless. If you shoot an animal just to leave it there and just to shoot it, then you're a special kind of jerk off. And I'm sorry for the younger people that are listening, but got to be real with it. And many non-hunters ask if we feel guilt. And I'd say about 99% of hunters, roughly, eat what they harvest and share the meat with numerous people. There's always a certain few out of every bunch of people, no matter it be any type of community or any state or just any person. It varies from person to person, but there's always that group of people that do stuff for the wrong reasons with any aspect of life. And we feel a mix of emotions. Hunters, and I can, I can only uh, speak for myself, but all the emotions I feel, it's always on the happier side. More like we just like accomplished an amazing feat. And the quest was concluded. So there's many times that you see hunters cry. And you see many hunters do a bunch of different things. Whether it be they shake right after the shot, or they freak out, or they high five, or they yell, or they break down and they cry and they tear up and they catch their breath and they just can't believe what happened, right? And that's not the for the pe for the people that are happy after the shot. It's not so much it's just like I just killed something. Yes, let's go. That's not that's not the feeling that we're getting. It's more like well. And normally you have to put in a ton of work for it. So it's like all the work and months and years of preparation and management and skill and scouting all came down to one moment of making the perfect shot. And the amount of off time, like when you're at home or you're just target shooting and you're just practicing your form and your craft, it's like the same thing like martial arts. Uh you train and train and train and train for the fight and then when you win it's just like holy crap I just did it all that training came together so for hunting it's like the months and months and months and off time preparation and making sure everything is tuned and your form is right and your breathing is right in archery and e even with gun shooting it's like your breathing's right your sights on and you're hiking for miles and so many failed hunts where you didn't come home with anything. Uh, it's just, it all came together and you finally got food for the freezer. You got food on reserve in case there's another pandemic and there's another lockdown and the meat shelves run out. And it's just an amazing feeling that we get. All right. For me, th there's a couple hunts where I like, I teared up and I cried because it was a connection and a relief thing to where it was like I hunted this deer for literally 90, 90 days in a row and on the 91st day I finally saw him and then on the 103rd day I finally got it 
get, he came in the shooting range and I made a perfect shot. I was waiting and I put in the time. I put in countless hours of time just sitting for him. And I finally got the shot and I finally harvested an animal. It's just like, whew, I can't believe that just happened. And now the work begins. All right. It's like a little 30 second spree of emotions of just like happiness. And then the work continues to go on because then you have to track the animal. You have to find the animal. You have to gut the animal. And then you got to get him home, make sure the meat's all good. And then you got to skin it out and quarter it and take the silver skin off and then freezer wrap it and make sure the meat's all good. And it's just an entire process to where when you're done with the process and you you plop down on your couch at night or you just sit down and you're like, wow, all this was worth it. And then the next meal you have with it, it's like one of the best meals that you can have, like spiritually, essentially, because you're just like, I did all this. This deer was a living, breathing animal, and he lived such a natural life in the wilderness uh, he wasn't farm raised. He wasn't fed and kept in a pen and just a fake life for them. And he, he was out there roaming around, eating acorns. And I came along and I put my skills to work and I harvested a meal. And a lot of times when we, like me, Rob, Tyler, Ray, Eddie, like everyone, like my hunting group, a lot of times when we go out there and we harvest an animal, depending how it is that night, how late, how late it is, we will take the the inner tenderloin out of the deer and we'll put it in the pan, butter, garlic, and we eat it as we process the rest of the deer, kind of like the, the reward aspect. Because for me, the two best parts of a deer is the inner tenderloin and the back strap. All right, that's the two cuts of meat that are like the prized filet mignon of venison. And it's just an amazing thing because it's just like this deer was walking around and then we harvested them and now we have meals for many, many, many days. And like for me, when I have a great year and I shoot like 10, 12 deer, and that, that and that's not even mixing up the fact that I turkey hunt, I fish, I pheasant hunt, I bear hunt, all them different meats packed into a freezer, you could have, you could eat steady game meat for days and days and days on end. Right, and some people say they get bored of the meat, X, Y, and Z, but it's like, okay, then maybe do venison one night, turkey the next night. There's a million different species of fish just to go through, whether it's trout, sand. Work and it was just pitch black. But Ray got what he could, pretty good footage. And um, yeah, we perfect shot, quartering away. There's a massive hole on the one side of the deer, but it looks like it went straight down. I caught some type of spine. We, Ray gutted them for me because you guys know I got a messed up finger. Two tendons in my nerve I cut. Had surgery. But he skinned them out or gutted them and found the broadhead broken off in the spinal cord. So what do you think happened, Ray? Uh, I think you had a deflection on a rib cage on entry. And it deflected upwards because he dropped right where you shot. And uh, as I was gutting him, uh, once we were done gutting him, I looked for it and I found the broadhead it stuck in the spine so it definitely deflected between the ribs and went upwards end of story <laughs> good night Irene <laughs> but hey it makes an easy tracking job he died pretty quick after he went down but awesome unique buck crab claws on both sides a lot of character and that's that that's my fall bow tag just in time for permit bow and now it's his turn for the deer, right? The money adds up and we put so much time and work into it that when it all comes together, we feel happy. And there's many times to where I get emotional about it, but it's never like, oh my God, I just killed a deer. What have I done? It's, it's never like that. It's like, I can't believe that just happened. All right, my father passed away. So when I harvest an animal, I'm always like, thank you, dad. Thank you for letting this opportunity happen for me. And whether you believe in religion or not, it, we're not talking about that, but just a spiritual experience. And it's just a great thing and a mix of emotions that are always on the better side. I mean, there's times where I get sad and I feel remorse, but it's never like I'm done hunting. I'm never going to hunt again because of what I just did. If I, I know I'm going out there to harvest an animal. I wouldn't be hunting if I was going to be sad once the animal was, was harvested. 
right? And a lot of hunters have a heart. It, it's it's amazing, guys. If you guys are a non-hunter listening to this podcast, I implore you to just hear me out. A lot of hunters have a heart. There are so, so, so many times we're, when we're going out hunting, and if we see an animal in distress, we'll help that animal. We don't just go out there and shoot everything that is breathing and moving, right? There's times where I've gone out there and there was a deer stuck in a fence, all right? And just because it's hunting season, I'm hunting deer, I'm not just going to walk up to it and shoot it. I'm going to go go up to it and help it to the best of my possible abilities, right? And even as something as simple as driving down the road, there's a turtle on the road, I stop and make sure traffic doesn't murk this turtle and yoink it across the freeway. I get out, block traffic, and I move the turtle, right? It's just common decency to protecting wildlife, conserving wildlife, and just ex- helping out another species. So when we do finally get a chance to harvest an animal versus the millions and millions and millions of cows that are killed every year that are just kept in like a, a pen that they can only move an inch to the left, an inch back, an inch right, and they're just crammed hay down their throat and to drink water just to fatten up for all you gluttons out there that just go to the supermarket and don't know where your food comes from. And on to the next point, a lot of people feed their families and friends with all this meat. All right, I already touched on that, but just having the food aspect after the hunt is an amazing thing. I absolutely love the taste of venison. I love the love the taste of fish, all the different fish species. I mean, if I don't like how an animal tastes, I won't hunt it, obviously. Uh, but I love the way deer, elk, uh, bear is okay to me. I'll eat it. Sir, the way, it's all about the way you cook it with bear meat for me. And I've had amazing bear meals and I've had subpar bear game meals. All right, Pheasant tastes amazing. All the fish tastes amazing. It's all just about how you cook it. So I've had a lot of people that go, venison is gamey and it tastes like crap. I don't like the taste of venison. I could smell it and I could tell the difference. And I'm like, yeah, you bring me a a steak, a T-bone steak, and I'll give you a piece of venison and I'll blindfold you and I'll have you smell each and taste them both. And I guarantee you, you can't tell the difference. Right, it's all about how you cook it. And I've had amazing, amazing meals. Some of my f- favorite meals were from venison and game meat. And not even just to mention on that aspect, for the people that hunt and they don't eat it for themselves, all right, there is a program called Hunters for the Hungry. And more than 8.1 million meals are provided every single year for the hungry. And whether that be the homeless or homeless veterans or just anyone that can't get food, million meals a year for hunters for the hungry and that's just people dropping off a deer they harvested to these to this uh organization and they process it and they distribute the meals and i believe they have this in every state just google it for your state if you guys are interested in this and if you guys shoot a surplus of deer this year you could always drop one or two off at hunters for the hungry and help some other people in need um the next thing on the list all right there's just a surreal experience that comes with it. All right, you're almost tapping into like your ancestry side cuz all all people have either the hunter gatherer gene in them and some people hunt, some people gather. It's just how it is. And you almost feel just one with nature when you're out there hunting. And depending on the style of hunting, if you're spot and stalking versus being in a tree stand or even just any type of hunting in general, When you're out there and you're in the woods and you're in their environment, you have to trick what they know, right? If someone, if a deer came into your house and tried to kill you, it's not familiar with the environment. You go into the woods, you're not really familiar with every stick and log and twist and turn, but you have to outsmart the animal and you have to be the superior species to be able to harvest this animal. And a lot of people get into hunting for health in food, right? They want to know where they're food comes from and a lot of times hunters have a better connection and belief system it's it's on like the same wavelength with vegans that are okay with hunting because the, compared to anti-hunters and non-hunters that just know absolutely nothing about hunting and they don't care to all right we just a lot of people just want to know where their food comes from so it's almost the same aspect of like someone having a giant garden in their backyard If you're growing your tomatoes, you're growing your cucumbers, your squash, your lettuce, and peppers, and everything else, it's on on the same thing. You know how that tomato 
you planted that seed and it grew because you watered it and you took care of it and you had to make sure there were no bugs on it, eating your fruit, eating your meals, and you, you just know where your food came from. On the same way, we go out there, we know how where our food came from. We harvested an animal and we know exactly how the meat was prepared, right? Whether it was kept in good condi condition or bad condition, how long it wasn't frozen, how long it's been frozen, right? You harvest an animal and you take care of the meat. That meat could last two, three years in your freezer if done right. And you harvest it and you know that you took as much care as you could possibly take with that meat and it's going to taste the best. So we're on the, like, the same wavelength with vegans and non-hunters that are okay with hunting and the people that just want to know where their food comes from hunting's a great way to do it so if you want to get your vegetable side do your giant garden in the backyard and if you want to get your protein side go out and hunt an animal and process the meat or go fishing and process the meat off of fish right and a lot of people think that um fishing and hunt they have two different beliefs on fishing and hunting like they're okay with a fish getting killed but not a deer getting killed and i don't know why that is right it's just been promoted for years that fish don't have feelings <laughs> and that's just a funny thing to me uh whether they can comprehend them the same way they could definitely feel but it's just on the same wavelength where they're okay with that or they're okay with a deer getting killed and not a bear getting killed or they're okay with a fish getting killed and not a deer getting killed. And then there's some people that are just so extreme. No animals should die. Just no animals should die. And that's just not how nature is. That's how all the animals that are living, that's how they live because they hunt and kill other animals. And if we take us back to way back when, however many million years ago, that's how we survived. We hunted and we gathered. That's how we survived. And hunting is also a aspect of like meditation and mental strength. Right? You have to have the mental strength and durability to go out there day after day and trucking through the wet, the cold, the hot, the snow. And you're going through there. You're trying to be as quiet as possible. And then you're just sneaking in on these animals and you're coming up. And then your mental strength kicks in to where you have to keep everything together until the shot is sent off and then once you make the perfect shot you it's because you're so serious the entire hunt so if you have a th you've been hunting for three hours and you've been quiet you've been still you've been watching your every move don't step on that stick step on this mossy rock because it's quiet or don't step on that leaf and you're creeping and you're creeping and you're stopping and then you're scanning the woods you spot an animal and you have to creep the whole way the deer picks its head up you stop you freeze puts his head back down you start moving and then you get close enough to make a shot and you're so still you're so quiet you're barely breathing and then you come to a good uh yardage to make a good shot you come up you settle your pin yeah make sure you exhale your form's right all right kiss your button close one eye and then just squeezing that trigger don't slap that trigger don't jerk that shot and you make the perfect shot then it's like i just did it i just did it that that's that's the feeling of happiness we get we get and then we get up to them and a lot of people including me when after i track the animal and i make the most ethical shot i possibly could take and i finally find the animal all right i say my thanks thank you thank you for the meals thank you for everything all right for me thank you dad for watching over over me being with me and it's just a good experience and that's when you find the animal right there was like a 10 second spree of like remorse and not a remorse like i wish i didn't kill you it's like thank you thank you for letting this happen thank you for the meals that's more the remorse side so if you guys are new to hunting and you're just trying to get out there try and find a good mentor a mentor is one of the best ways to learn hunting it's very hard if you have just zero experience in hunting because there's so many laws and different regulations and so many different seasons and ways to go about it and how to, how to do it the right way versus the wrong way. All right, I'd rather have someone find a mentor and cut your learning, your learning curve down from like however many years down to a year in the common aspects. All right, you will never learn absolutely every aspect of hunting. Every time you go out, you always, always, always learn something new. And that's also why I enjoy hunting. Uh, there's always a new trick and tactic to learn and to pick up with the wind direction and this, that, and the next. 
but there's always something new. So try and find a mentor, try and find someone that will teach you what they know and make sure it's a good one, make sure it's a good hunter. He treats the animals with respect, treats the meat with respect, and he's out there for the right reasons, right? And if you guys have any questions, please contact me, obviously, outdoorsman at gmail.com. And um, that is it for today's podcast, obviously, outdoorsman. Uh, another first light talks in the books, number 20 again. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this topic, enjoyed the, the news article about new hunters and all the rest. But if you guys are new to Obviously Outdoorsman in general, all right, you can check us out on YouTube to check out all of our adventures and fishing and hunting experiences, how-to videos, calling tactics. There's a bunch of stuff on our YouTube. And if you want to watch the video format to this podcast, uh, it's on YouTube as well. And if you're on YouTube and maybe you're driving next time you want to listen to Obviously Outdoorsman's podcast, all right, you can bring it up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you listen. So check us out on Instagram and Facebook as well. We are normally more active on Instagram compared to Facebook. Instagram is where like our current new stuff and current catches and harvests, they're always on Instagram first normally. And if you guys just want to follow us, I'd really appreciate it. And for YouTube or whatever, Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, no matter where you are, um, I'm here for you guys, the hunting community. I hope you guys enjoy what we're doing here. Please leave a comment. Get in touch with me if you like what we're doing. We don't like you don't like what we're doing. Uh, just let us know. Subscribe, follow us, turn on the little bell to be notified when we post. I'd greatly appreciate it, guys. All right? I am Mike. We obviously outdoorsmen. Thank you for listening. Enjoy your day, and on to tomorrow's podcast. Peace, guys.